Florida is just teeming with great new destinations. I am making my way down through the list and I'll take you with me when I do. Uh, but right now, one of my favorites is Playa Linda Beach Lot 13. By the way, did you know that Playa Linda Beach was voted one of the top 15 beaches in Florida? <laughs> I know, right? The beach is totally clothing optional, but only within Area 13, uh, give or take. Uh, now, there has been some nudists that has gone down as far as 12, and during uh, some recent hurricane damage that shut down 13, uh, they were down as far as like lot, lot five and six, I believe. So while you may see some of the other areas that might be utilized as clothing optional, Play it on the safe side. Go to Area 13. That's the one that's been designated and nobody's going to bother you there. And nudity is not required on, on Lot 13. Most people probably do, or, or at least in some stage of, of, of undress there. Uh, but don't come down fully clothed and just gawk at people. That's just rude. That's like, that's like at any nudist venue. You know, you kind of come across as a creeper. And don't be taking pictures of people without their permission first. This area is family friendly, so you can have uh, children there. Uh, you basically, any, anybody in your family can go, except, I'm sorry to say, you people with the little furry members of your family. Dogs are not allowed on the beach at Playa Linda, uh, but they can go to the park. There's, there's other areas in there that they are welcome, but just not on the beach. And like most nudist venues that I've seen, it seems like the ratio of male to female is, is, is higher toward the male side, and I would say the day I was there, it was probably two to three to one, I guess, uh, uh, male to female type ratio. But with that said, I didn't see any kind of, of encroachment or, or misbehavior going on. So your mileage may vary. Playa Linda is part of the Canaveral National Seashore and it is inside of a national park. It's the sister beach of Apollo Lot 5, which if you want to see more about it, you can check it out right up here. Playa Linda is accessed through Titusville and it's a little bit of a, a journey as you're going to be going down through the Merritt Island National uh, seashore to get there. Uh, so this will be ready for a little bit of a drive. The beach is open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day of the week. And because it is a national park, there is an entry fee. Uh, the, the, the yearly pass for the Canaveral National Seashore is $45. Uh, you can also get a private vehicle pass for, I think it was a three-day trip for $25. Uh, motorcycles are 20 and individual pass is 15. Because I'm an old coot, I was able to get the, the Blanket National Park uh, annual pass for $25. So I have access to all these places, including uh, Apollo and Playa Linda. So that's kind of nice till the end of the year. The Playa Linda Seashore has 13 beach lots. One through 12 are textile only. Uh, well, 13 is reserved for the clothing optional section. Uh, there is a large sign, uh, maybe more than one, that, that does warn people about uh, possible nude sunbathers on, on lot 13. So anybody going down there, unless they're totally oblivious, should not be surprised at what they might uh, run into. There's no hotels, no homes, no restaurants or amenity areas anywhere uh, along that road down to Playa Linda lot 13. Uh, so if you want just natural beach, this is the place for you. Uh, with that said though, the, the amenities are pretty, pretty limited. Uh, uh, we'll talk about parking in a minute, but the restrooms are of the old chemical type, like an, like an old outhouse. Uh, you can find sanitizer there, but there is no running water either for drinking or washing uh, other than the ocean itself, I guess. Uh, so, so yeah, bring everything you need with you down there. Large sand dunes uh, are, are in between the road and the beach. So uh, once you're on the beach, you will basically see nothing but the vegetation, the dunes and the water. It's awesome. When you reach the end of the road, there's a little, little cul-de-sac for a turnaround and then the, the road actually ends right there. Uh, I don't know and I'd be curious, uh, throw it out in the comments below if you know the answer to this, but I'm not sure if like Apollo that people will queue up in that, that uh, cul-de-sac waiting for a, a place to park. Uh, I don't know. Let me know. Let me know. Whatever you do though, don't park in the cul-de-sac and do not park on the side of the road or you're very well uh, likely to have your trip ruined with a, a ticket on your windshield. Nobody wants that. Lot 13 has about 45 parking places uh, and, and they do fill up relatively fast so you probably need there be there by mid-morning. Uh, or, or you're going to be having a heck of a walk or, or a lot of, uh, uh, you know, maybe have to go somewhere else uh, within the beach area. Uh, you can also park down at lot 12. It's about a three tenths of a mile hike and there's another 50 some odd, like 57 
uh, parking spots there. So you can park there and either walk down the road or get out on the beach and, and enjoy a little more scenic trip as you walk down the lot 13 area. Now on the plus side, what this means is just like in Apollo, you are not going to see this beach overcrowded. Uh, at the worst case, there's going to be a few hundred people there. And, and it's a large stretch of beach. Uh, every time I go, people are way spread out. So it's not like, not like you're gonna be shoulder to shoulder with any of your uh, fellow guests. Uh, so there's plenty of room for everyone. And like all beaches, make sure you use the boardwalk to get to the beach. Do not walk on the dunes. Uh, one, it's rude. Two, it's illegal. You can get fined for that. Uh, but let's help take care of our beaches all together, shall we? Once there, you're going to see people partaking on walking the beach, swimming, sunbathing, kayaking, nature watching, and fishing. The water entry was gentle. Uh, the, the current and the, and the waves were a little bit rough, so, so be careful, particularly of rip currents. or signs out there as reminders. Uh, but the, it was easy to get in the water, the sand was soft, and, and the temperature was awesome. There's a lot of interesting wildlife you can see out there. There are seabirds uh, flying almost continuously, uh, some on the beach with you, and, and you can see little crabs, and occasionally you can see large marine mammals like, like dolphins or, um, shoot, I don't, I don't even know what it was. It looked like a sea lion that one day I was out there. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things to see. Uh, you can just enjoy your time. With that said, there's a couple of things you need to be careful of. There are turtles there. So not only nesting areas, they're out kind of uh, commuting around, if you will. Uh, so make sure when you're driving up there that you, you're being mindful of the road. You don't want to run over a turtle. And likewise, uh, if, if there's a nesting area there, you don't want to be messing with it or stepping on it, things like that. There is a turtle patrol, so to speak, that, that runs up and down the beach and marks these, these nesting areas. So make sure you give them a wide berth, uh, you know, kind of help out our little turtle buddies there. And you might actually get lucky on the day of your visit and get to witness a launch from Canaveral Space Center. Uh, sometimes, when uh, depending on the trajectory, they might uh, close the beaches, so you might want to check and make sure there's nothing scheduled like that. But if you are there, it is an amazing show, and you can actually uh, feel the rumble in your chest. It was fairly overcast the day I was there, uh, so I didn't have to worry about the sun as much. Uh, but when the sun did come out, it did remind you that you're in Florida and it was pretty brutal. Uh, make sure you bring plenty of sunscreen and maybe some aloe in case that you know you overdo a little bit. Uh, a lot of people had umbrellas and, and tents they could set up, little, little uh, wind blockades, things like that. Uh, it was kind of windy the day I was there, so that made it a little bit problematic for the people. Uh, but it seemed to work out okay. Just make sure your stakes go deep enough so you don't have a lot of flying, flying uh, structures going around down there. In my opinion, this beach is awesome. Uh, with the exception of the parking, which you're going to find anywhere like this, uh, it, it was just outstanding trip. I'm used to like, like nudist venues being a little more on the rustic side. And well, I guess this falls into that same category with the chemical toilet and all. It, it is just phenomenal. The, the beach is nice, the access is, is not difficult, and it's just a beautiful place to go out and get your all over tan. So take a look at this treasure of a beach. I think you find that you're really gonna like it and it may become one of your regular stops. Uh, so until next time, don't forget the sunscreen. Have fun.